Dr. Young, scene three, take one. Don't begin yet, Dr. Here is a Latin inscription. Uh, it's a very cryptic text that would need a lot of commentary. Uh, but I give you the mere translation. This is, the stone speaks now being personified of himself and says, Orphanos sum, solus tamen ubique reperior. Udosum said me contrarius. I am an orphan, alone. Uh, yet I am found everywhere. I am one, but I am contrary to myself. A youth and an old man at the same time. I have known neither father nor mother because I must be lifted up from the depths uh, like, uh, like a fish or I am uh, uh, I fall down from the sky like the white stone in woods and on mountains, I am walking about. But I am hidden. I lie hidden in the innermost of man. I am mortal for everyone. And yet, I am not touched by the mutation of time. Uh, so this was filmed in 1950. <coughs> The lake of Felix, uh, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> lake Zurich. Now there is a What is it? <coughs> uh, uh, Dr. Jung is sitting by the lake. Oh, yes. Yeah. He liked very much to sit by the lake. But he wore leather shoes you'd wear in New York, you know. He never thought of being really sporty. Or really in work clothes, you know, like we have now. It was way a 19th century man would. Oh, dear. Chiseling. <sighs> That's a hand chiseling. There are. What is he doing? Uh, he's just chiseling. Chiseling. Dr. Young, scene one, take one. When I actually do that, that sound of my hands makes a big mark on the soundtrack. What? And that corresponds to, to the picture of the two hands coming together. And then when you link those two, everything from then on is in sequence. And if you don't do that, you can never get the words back. Can you show me the, the quarry that this stone came from? Well, the quarry is right, uh, right over there. It's you see there. That's that uh, uh, that wall of rock. Yes. 
uh, it's been no, be, be, below that meadow. That's there, that's the quarry. It's now uh, against the light. You can't see it properly. I think I see it. And then the boat brought it over to here. Oh yes. Did you order this stone? Oh yes. Was it for the building of that house? Oh yes. We had uh, all the stones packed from here to from over there to our two quarries. But how, how did it happen that this one stone here? Uh, well, that's a funny story about that stone. Uh, we needed a certain, ki a certain stone for that wall behind the tower. And uh, we gave the exact uh, measurements to the uh, foreman, and he took them down properly. And uh, the next day, they brought a load of stones. And, uh, uh, but we looked in vain for the stone we had ordered was a pretty big stone, the order. Instead, they brought a perfect cube. Uh, well, that, that, that stone here. And, uh, of course, my mason uh, didn't like it at all and said they should take it back, but I took it as a hint. I, I, I leapt on it at once. I say, now this is the stone I, I need. And uh, instantly had the idea I would put it, put it there with an inscription. Uh, you know that the cube uh, caught my fantasy. But you'd cut stones before, haven't you? Oh yes, I have learned cutting stone uh, in in, the, in in that quarry over there. Really? Yes, I have built uh, that that house here. Well, how long did you work on it? With two workmen. Well, we had it up. Uh, Practically in six weeks. Well, how did you, how long did you work on the cutting of this stone? Oh, on the stone, well, off and on uh, since uh, last September. So really, a year. Uh, well, a year, yes. But only off and on when I was here. Did you carve all four sides of it? No, no, so only the three sides, because uh, the back side is invisible it's against the bushes. And what is it? Sandstone. Yes, it is a hard uh, blue sandstone, very hard. like anyone I've ever seen. I think they changed their hair. And I can't see her features, really. Yes, on his right was Mrs. Young, on that left side. Yes, yes. This is right. Now you'll see, I think it's very difficult to see. It's 
I can't yeah. see him. Uh, I can see some, I can see somebody, but I can't see but who they are. Well, ne it never occurred to me I wouldn't be able to see them. Love. And he told his wife that he was very frank with her. He told her that uh, he loved Tony Wolf. She was his uh, spiritual love. And this is you accepted this.
and there will be now another person coming in. So difficult to see here. Oh, I got my new life in there. Yes. Uh, Frau. Uh, yeah, yes. Frau okay. Ferber. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh, Capitan or something like that. Frau Ferber. <coughs> was it? Then that we. Uh, oh, well, she lived, not... she lived in, <coughs> not in Zurich, she <coughs> lived in, uh, where I met Jung, uh, Ascona. Ascona? Yes. Um, <coughs> that's, a, that's a morning or afternoon journey from, uh, uh, Zurich. And it's on a long finger lake. Uh, I spent my time there that I, saw Dr. Young. Uh, and there's a cay that used to be a fishing village uh, on this long Finger Lake. And it's very warm. That's why Dr. Young went there. She had a big house with gardens on the edge of the lake. Just so that's the one the garden that you saw? Yes. Just up the lake a little way. And every uh, summer she would have a conference uh, of scholars who would lecture. And uh, all the young men would come from all over and stay at the hotel there and meet every evening and chat, chat. There were, there were scholars on many, many diverse subjects, but all had young men implications uh, that were felt to be cohesive with his ideas and All right. well you see uh, this uh, is a Greek inscription uh, it begins Aion Pais Esti Paison Petoion Paidos it is a quotation from Herrn Baitos. It says, Time is a child that plays like a child. It, uh, a game uh, on a board. The kingdom of the child. Uh, then Telesphoros, this is the name of this little figure here. He is uh, the familiar spirit of the god of the physicians, Esculapius. The text says, Telesphoros traveling through the dark spaces of the cosmos. And rising out of the depth like a star. He points the way. Par e ilioio pilas kai de mononairo to the gates of the sun and the land of the dreams. The latter is a quotation from Homeros. Then you see four a division into four, four part parts. Here are the three lightnings, one river. It's uh, the ancient idea of paradise with its four rivers. Three are, were supposed to be equal, and one is has a double meaning, and that's the one here, the river. Th this is the an old alchemistic secret, uh, so-called axioma Maria. Uh, this Maria has nothing to do with Mary, uh, but with the Maria Prophetessa or Judaica. She was a philosopher in the time of Hypatia. That was another woman philosopher living in Alexandria about the third century. It says, this axioma says, from 
one comes two, from two, three, and from the third comes the one as the fourth. Uh, this uh, axioma has played a very great role through 1700 years of alchemy. Then you see here the sign of the sun, here the sign of the moon. On the left side Jupiter, on the right side Venus. Saturn above, Mars below. These four planets are the so-called division into four, the Tetrameria. The, here on the body of the child is a sign of Mercury and, and he is supposed to be Mercury or Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Uh, the text refers to him as the one that points to the region of the Westland that is supposed to be the land of the dead. Young, scene two, take three. Scene four, take one. This is a Latin inscription. Uh, it is a verse by Arnoldus de Villanova, a famous physician and uh, alchemist of the early 13th century. It reads, here is the stone, the, the insignificant one, cheap concerning price. It is despised by the stupid, all the more appreciated by the wise. C.G. Jung, from gratitude, has uh, put, uh, made and put this stone in memory of his 75th birthday. That's it. <laughs>